We are recording Investing 101 Workshop with Financialism, aka Georgie. Here we go. Sharing this screen. And here we are. I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about me. Spend two minutes there because there's a lot of content that I need to fill up and make sure everyone here is ready to go and start investing or continue investing. Um, sometimes there will be awkward pauses as I admit people in. So who the heck am I? I'm just a dude who posts on Instagram about finance. I started doing that around 2018. And uh, some of my posts got a whole lot of uh, follows and likes. And uh, so I, I grew somewhat of a following there. There. Um, I love uh, rapping. Uh, I guess you could see in my uh, window right there. There's uh, there's my microphone right over there. So I actually got songs on Spotify. I'm not promoting that here. I'll promote that afterwards. Uh, they're actually pretty good. One's called Lazy Boy, and it was played on an ABA podcast, The Behavior Ladies. Uh, I'm gonna call them ladies, but uh, I don't say bad words. Uh, if you know who they are, uh, check it out. Um, there's me, uh, my interests. So Darth Vader is actually an NFT. I'm, I'm really into NFTs and delving more into putting my money there, mostly for pl flipping, but I do hold some projects. A majority of my money is in stocks. Um, I would say 90% of my money is in stocks. So if you hear me talking about crypto or NFTs, I'm still putting a majority of my money into stocks. Um, uh, crypto is something that I started in 2018, and uh, I wish that I followed the same principles that I created for myself with stocks, which is investing consistently. Uh, but with crypto, I went in lump sum, and uh, that was a mistake. <laughs> I should have uh, definitely spread it out, and that's what the data says is uh, – has, has a very good chance of being successful, especially with something that is volatile. Um, I started investing in 2015, which is the same uh, year that I started working as a RBT, which is a registered behavior technician. We work with uh, kids on the autism spectrum mostly. Um, so that was a lot of fun. As soon as I got my uh, first paycheck, I started putting it into the market, having no idea what I was doing. I just knew that if you interview 10 rich people, they'll say, I invested, I invested. And if you interview 10 not so rich people, they will say, I, I don't know what investing is. That's for rich people. So I noticed a trend there and I was like, hold on, I, I, I want to kind of be in this category of person. Uh, no offense, no offense. You know, we're, we're all learning. So um, here is uh, my other hobbies. Uh, I love boogie boarding. Uh, that is obviously not me over there. Uh, but boogie boarding is uh, one of my loves. If I can have a day without getting stung by a stingray, that is the worst pain I have ever felt. There I am in San Diego getting stung. There I am in Huntington getting stung. And uh, the Huntington one, I saw my grandpa's ghost. Uh, so that was wild. Okay, now um, let's kind of uh, get into uh, what we came here for now that we know. By the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram, follow your boy on instagram that's financialism please watch out for the fake accounts if it's spelled wrong if there's some little thing that's making you doubt it there's going to be a fake account messaging you i promise you i can't get rid of them i can't get rid of them they scammed or they tried to scam one of my friends they actually sent them four thousand dollars and uh, the bank rewinded that so that was wild the bank was wells fargo I had another friend who sent like 300 the bank did not rewind that so please be careful on instagram media literacy is a heck of a tool and uh, there are scammers out there um i don't know i don't know sometimes they win that's why they keep doing it right um uh, intermittent schedule of uh, reinforcement okay chapter one but why why must we invest as we got uh, some some folks hopping on right now again there will be awkward pauses so chapter one but why check this out why do we invest well we live in a token economy meaning money doesn't really have value on its own it connects itself to value. So we trade it, obvious, right? But let's break it down that way. Um, I work with a lot of kids uh, on the autism spectrum. And some of the time, we think that it's appropriate to teach them the value of saving up the value of trading, and the value of receiving something very quickly that can hold their attention uh, for a little bit of time that they don't necessarily 
idolize or worship or really, really, really love, which is a token. So when it comes to money, a lot of people get mixed up. They start valuing the piece of paper more than what it can give you. Um, so that is uh, something that's very, very interesting to me. But as long as we're aware of our weaknesses and our biases, we can be like, hold on a second. I'm supposed to trade this for something. I like trading it for stocks. Um, we're going to talk about how the value of money actually decreases. And what's very interesting is the more the value of money decreases, the more of it that we want or need. Uh, it's called inflation, spoiler alert. Uh, alert. Um, so a value altering effect, right? Why do stocks, real estate, why does it go up, right? Well, because it becomes more and more scarce. There's a finite amount of stocks. There's a finite amount of uh, real estate. There's a finite amount of Pokemon cards and Bitcoin, et cetera, et cetera. Um, sometimes uh, that's not true. Like Ethereum is not a finite amount of crypto, but that's another TED talk. Um, so over here, we see someone working really, really tough and uh, they get that house. What happens if there's less houses? Well, huh, they're going to engage in that behavior a lot more. They're going to get more money and then they're going to buy that house eventually, right? Uh, so that's the way that value changes. But what the heck is value, right? If we operationally define value, we have to really think about that because it's going to be unique to each and every one of you. So you guys don't have to type this, but if you want to, I'm very curious what these bright minds think about what value is. How do you define value? I'm going to awkwardly pause for about... 30 seconds, probably 15, so you guys can like brain spit it off the top of your heads. What is value? I told you it'd be an awkward 15 seconds. Should we make it 10? I'm gonna wait that five. All right, perfect. So for my life, oh, no, no one was brave enough to type it in. That's that's okay. That's okay. Some, so, uh, don't worry about that. Um, for me, um, value is something that increases the quality of my life. Now, what the heck does quality mean? Well, quality means I get to do things that I want to do. Uh, that is what increases my, uh, that, that's what value is to me. Now, a great investor by the name of Warren Buffett, he would consider value something else. Value to him is cash flowing assets, i.e. a business. So a business has cash flow that has value to him. Bitcoin has no cash flow. So therefore, he values it at zero. You will hear Warren Buffett saying, I will never buy Bitcoin. That was pretty good. Okay. <laughs> I will never buy Bitcoin. That wasn't him. That was someone else. Um, who was that? I don't know. Um, but that's one way that we see value. I value uh, going to the gym, right? Because going to the gym increases my muscles, which later on will protect my skeleton, which if I fall when I'm older in life, will uh, probably help me uh, stand up and walk it off a lot quicker than other folks, right? Doing stretches protects my hips. That's going to happen in the future. We don't want to be ageist, right? We, we're thinking about gender. We're thinking about race a lot of times. But what about age? We got to be talking about that because that impacts, um, well, all of us, not that the other two don't, but don't forget the other of the big three. Age is important and we can protect, prepare for it now. It's not just about money, right? For retirement, it's not just money. It's skill sets. How are you preparing your body? Uh, the body changes. And how are you preparing your mind? Okay. Um, why do we invest? Let's continue here. In 1990, 20 bucks could get you a pizza, a water bottle, and two tickets to the movies. They were like $5 each. In 2022, 20 bucks gets you a water bottle. I'm just kidding. Obviously, uh, you could probably get like a movie ticket and have $3 left over depending on where you live. And that's because the value of money has been decreasing. Why? The value of money has been decreasing because there's just more of it printed. That's all. Um, now, here's a myth that I really want to bust here. Um in uh, 2020, right, a lot of money was printed. People are saying those uh, stimulus checks really uh, made the value of the dollar go down. It wasn't the stimulus checks. I mean, it 
certainly played a role, right? And especially a psychological effect, but who really abused the system? And why do we have like uh, this whole, here's 100 million or uh, not 100 million, but 100,000 extra IRS workers. Well, it's because people got uh, loans from the government for businesses and they spent it on cars and Pokemon cards. I don't know if you guys saw the Pokemon card that went for $90,000. Um, they didn't make too much money off of that. Um, if if only they borrowed uh two hundred thousand dollars and bought uh the Pokemon card that is graded ten out of ten instead of nine point five, that actually went to four hundred thousand. Um, but anyways, always buy high quality. That's true for Pokemon. That's true for stocks. Uh, and that's true for crypto, for the long term. So um, you actually need forty five dollars today to have uh the same amount of buying power that we had in 2020. Okay, there, there's the spoiler. I think I spoiled the slide. There it is. Um, so 1990, 20 bucks is the same as having 45 bucks in 2022. So if you hold all of that in cash, you're going to have a bad, bad time, right? Because cash goes down. Right? We, we we grind for these tokens, but we're not supposed to hold on to them. We're not supposed to actually value the tokens so much that we don't let go. Now, there's reasons to hold on to it, right? Emergencies happened. We can't sell our stocks that quickly. Um, maybe it's a bad time to sell our stocks. However, speaking of stocks, what if we took that 20 bucks and just bought the top 500 companies in 1990. Well, today that 20 bucks, well, it would be much more than $45. It would be $349. And we're going to talk about how the heck um, is that true? How, how do you more than 10x your money in three decades? Because uh, my grandpa has been having money in the bank and it has not been increasing except for those rare coins that he holds. Again, that's scarcity, right? But money itself is not scarce. There's a lot of it. So the value of it keeps going down daily. Um, right now, we're actually in an inflation crisis, but uh, we could talk about that in the Q&A because that is another TED Talk. I'm trying to get as much in you guys as possible. Here we go. Field trip. Oh my gosh, that's right. I wasn't going to just have you take my word on, well, it's $348.99, right? You can't just believe things you see on the internet just because you see it there, right? Um, I think that was a great quote by uh, Abraham Lincoln. I know, I know, I know. Cringe, 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 but we got to wake up here. We got to grind. So let's take a field trip and find out how can we actually know what the heck is the value of our uh, money if it was to be invested. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for just a moment and switch my screen to showing you one of the greatest tools I have ever found that people don't share on social media because it's very complicated, but I'm going to show you it's not. Uh, and you are going to have so much fun looking up your favorite companies there. So I'm going to stop my share. And now I'm going to start a new uh, share. Oh, Caitlin, I'm so sorry. You you were brave enough. Oh, there were some people who were brave enough. I'm my bad. When I'm in share screen mode, I don't see your guys' ideas about what value uh, meant to you. You guys were brave. I appreciate your bravery. So we're about to go on DQYDJ. So this is not uh, my rapper name. This is a don't quit your day job. So here we go. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, and I, I hope you guys enjoy this because I love messing around with this about to share my screen. We're about to hit it off. Here we go off to the races and boom, shakalaka stock, uh, stock, total return and dividend reinvestment. So in short, you could type in any company there's target and we could figure out what is the percentage increase and we could pick any date we want so if you want to go back to the 90s you can do that and then all you do is calculate return um it even shows you a dollar amount let's see if it actually loads um we're having some technical difficulties but no we're not it's it will turn into fifteen thousand dollars if you put your money into target about five years ago or six years ago that's actually amazing considering the dollar just decreased and decreased um but where did I get that $300 uh, dollar figure from? Let me show you as I backspace onto Google. Here we go. So we click the S&P 500 return calculator. Again, throwing terms at you. We will have a Q&A. You can ask and we'll figure it out. Um, but over here, I go back uh, to 1990. There we are. And this is the top 500 companies. Top 
500 companies. Uh, this is what Warren Buffett says. Um, if he passed away, he would have his loved ones invest in this, not financial advice. None of this is financial advice. I just want you guys to know what I'm doing. Um, so the total S&P calculator, let's uh, go ahead and calculate. So we see a 10.38% return and your money has went up. What is that? Uh, 22 times or so. So that's how we get um, from $20 to um, 300 and change. Um, but how can you figure out the dollar amount of this if it just shows percentages? Well, that's another easy one. Let's figure it out right now. Let's take this at a copy. Let's just memorize it, 10.4. Um, and we're going to go to a compound interest calculator. This is where the magic happens. If you guys are BCBAs and you're working uh, on teaching someone um, like life skills, right? How to exchange money or maybe the value of saving. Well, let's teach them the value of investing. Because um, if you start with $1,000 and you contribute... Uh, Let's not start with a thousand. Let's do that 20 example. And you contribute zero and you do this for 32 years, uh, which is from 1990. Uh, our interest rate, remember what it showed, the stock market gave back about 10.4% returns on an average, annual average, annualized. We calculate. And uh, I messed up in my slides. It's actually $474, much more than uh, 350 that I showed you. What did I do? I, I wonder, uh, did I put 30 years? I, I probably put 30 years and I probably uh, made this 10.3 or something. But anyways, I make mistakes all the time. But there you see, my mistake was actually in your favor uh, or in the people's favor because uh, having 20 bucks in the market since uh, 1990 would have produced almost $474.29. Uh, that's phenomenal. You're not going to get that. Um, uh, like you're not doing anything. Your response effort is zero. Okay, it's not zero. You click buttons on a keyboard and, and you're done. Um, okay, field trip is over. If you guys have any questions about that, um, let's uh, maybe type them in and then uh, we could go back to them later during the Q&A. That way you don't forget what they are and I kind of uh, see them there so I'm primed and remember what we're talking about here. Okay, let's go back to our uh, calculator. I mean, what? Yeah, that bug really kissed the heck out of me. At 4 a.m., people who came a little bit late, I got a, a bug crawled on my lips while I was sleeping. It was it was wild experience. But it shows what a gentle spirit I am, I guess. So this is an actual uh, kind of model for you guys where it's more of a, a model of uh, what my reinforcement looks like. I don't, mm, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that word in a second, but this is what my portfolio looks like. Um, this picture is actually a little bit dated, uh, but because the market is uh, kind of crashing right now, and when I say kind of, I, I, the market's crashing right now. Um, so, and you don't really see that all over the news like we did during COVID. That's why I'm doing these workshops right now. And I'm like, let's go guys, please, please. Please, please start investing. The world becomes better if we don't worry about money. I want to go to the moon again, right? I want to go to Mars uh, with or without Elon Musk. I just want to go. Uh, so I think uh, if everyone invests, we can move on to the next stage of whatever our uh, economic philosophies are. Um, this can create a work optional life. So over here, you see that most of my investments are in a Vanguard 500 index fund. This is exactly what I just showed you on Don't Quit Your Day Job, um, the S&P 500. It's just branded as the Vanguard 500. There's the Fidelity 500, the Charles Schwab 500 on Webull, which is what I'm going to be talking about, and all my pictures are from there. Um, it, it really doesn't matter what brokerage you make, but Webull is the one that will actually reward you right away for making an account. Um, uh, Weeble will, uh, you'll just type in another ticker symbol like VOO, which is the same thing. It's kind of like a burger at McDonald's is a burger at, uh, at, at Burger King. It's still burgers, right? Maybe you guys have a preference, but when it comes to this, there's no difference. There's no difference. The price doesn't matter. It could say $1,000. It could say $50. Your money will grow proportionally and you could probably buy a fractional share anyways. So let's move on. You guys see this. This is very hard for me to Photoshop, right? It would take way more work for me to Photoshop than to actually make this money for real. Actually, I didn't make it. The market made it for me. A lot of it I did make myself as BCBA and doing my work, my day job, working 
with uh, kids on the autism spectrum. But at the end of the day, most of this came from investing. Uh, the right side figure where it says unrealized gain and loss, that's actually not my total stock returns because I did do some selling at certain points and that kind of throws off the calculation, but that's okay. So let's actually look at what would happen if you stretch this out into the future because this is just seven years of work. Right. And uh, I know you hear stories all the time. Dude makes ten hundred and ten million dollars in one week off of uh, Bed Bath and Beyond. Well, I take the slow and steady approach and about 10 percent or less of my money does go towards those more high risk things. You got to have uh, rules and rule governed behavior or else you will fall apart to all of the temptations. Um, chapter two. But how? OK, here's my mom. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I said that we we're going to stretch this out into the future. Obviously, that a bug, man, that bug last night. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this. We're going to go back to our compound interest calculator. If you guys can't see this, uh, you, you, you tell me, right? You would tell me. Okay, you wouldn't just let me talk at you. Okay, let's say we start with $1,000 and monthly contribution will be $500 a month. People, people find ways to spend $500 on other things. Uh, not everyone can invest $500 right now. And some people can invest three times as much. So I'm just taking $500 and I'm putting it there. That is arbitrary. Um, okay, time and length. Let's just say you do this for a majority of your working uh, life. Let's do 40 years here. And we're going to lower this to 10%, uh, just so we're a little bit safer, even though over the last 40 years, the market gave closer to 12% annualized returns. And we'll take a look at what that looks like. I will enter an interest rate variance range so we could see if the market was a little bit uh, more rewarding or a little bit less rewarding. Uh, and we'll see what difference that makes and why you have to avoid uh, financial advisors, not financial advice. Um, calculate. Yeah, $2.7 million without starting your own business, without um, innovating anything for society. You could, you could do whatever as long as you invested those $500 month you turn into a millionaire in 40 years and we already talked about ageism so don't tell me no one wants to be um hecka rich at age 60 i don't know if you guys heard of this guy uh but this is wim hof um let me see some images of wim hof there he is dude this guy is 63 years old uh prime prime some of his greatest achievements were accomplished in the last three years i know it's just a one of one but there are countless countless uh, people in their 60s who are living life to the fullest. And there's people who are in their 20s and wasting their life. So it's not about age. Um, it's about your perception. Um, I believe that age is kind of a placebo. There is definitely a biological factor, but that biological factor shifts and moves. There is some liquidity, not, not a stock word, um, there. Um, it depends on your quality of sleep. Like right now, I probably aged like 40 years uh, with that insect thing that happened last night. So Wim Hof is actually my peer. Uh, he's all about breathing and all that, broke a bunch of world records. Uh, so climb Mount Everest um, in his, uh, oh, you can kind of see how he dresses when he climbs. Um, there's, there's actually a lot of studies on him and other people actually replicating what he does. I copied his breathing technique and, uh, over COVID, I would do it like every single day. And I got to almost, uh, three minutes of a breath hold. Never thought I could do that. But, uh, when you have, uh, you know, when you, when you follow someone who who's actually doing it for 20 minutes and you get to three minutes, that's pretty good. Uh, so there he is doing his thing. But anyways, I just want you to stop thinking about age like that. Um, the system got us like, well, I'm 50. It's over. No, you're just getting started. Warren Buffett, the greatest investor of arguably all time when it comes to stocks, he had less than 1% of his net worth at age 54, less than 1%. Okay. Um, there's a study from, I think, uh, the United Kingdom that says most of our most impactful achievements for the human race will happen between uh, age 60 and 70. So keep that in mind, guys. Your, your prime, your peak is still uh, not here. You're, you're just climbing up. Um, I could go on and on about age. Um, but anyways, what happens if we got 12% returns like the market actually gave? Well, instead of 2.7 million, we'd be looking at 4.7 million. This is real stuff. You can look it up at uh, uh, Don't Quit Your Day Job. So you see, I'm not making this stuff up. Um, 
Okay, and worst case scenario, if you got 8% returns, you're looking at $1.5 million. And that's another way to kind of value your, your final investing amount because inflation is a thing and it's been draining the value of the dollar by, by about 2%. So even if you would have 2.7 million in the bank, in today's value, you would probably be able to access $1.5 million of value. Um, but that that's a that's a convoluted topic. The whole point is I just want you guys to have as much money as possible in your lifetimes or enough to accomplish uh, your goals and get to maybe a work optional life or a free vacation every single year because you could sell off a portion of your stocks and just fund it and lead that fund for future generations so they could see the world uh, because not all of us had that luxury in life of seeing the world. But speaking of luxuries in life, um, let me talk about my mom for a second. My mom. So my mom started taking investing way more seriously at around age 49. So she was 49 years old uh, when she started investing. But luckily, she listened to a woman named Susie Orman, who was like a lover or hater, right? I, I don't see why you would hate her, but some people do. Uh, she is a financial guru from, I think, the early 2000s. My mom has her books. And Susie said, ladies, please just if you have a 401k at work, you put the money into the match and put it into a target date fund. A target date fund is your fund for shopping at Target. I'm just kidding. It's not. Um, it is a, a fund that automatically balances and rebalances itself every single year. It gets more conservative as you go towards your target retirement year. Um, I personally choose not to do this, but this has been a great and powerful investment tool, very hands-off. Uh, the reason I don't do it is because there's a small, tiny fee, and I feel like that fee kind of robs you of a little bit too much. Um, but I I'm probably just being extra frugal there. Um, my mom says, I heard her on the phone talking to a relative, please invest 100 a month. Do whatever you can to at least do that. If I knew this at your age. So my mom did not hit a millionaire status and she kind of, uh, and that's okay. That's totally okay. Right? Like you could be financially free and not a millionaire. Um, but my mom is working from home doing what she loves, flipping designer goods. And uh, she used to be a computer programmer. She ca We came here from the Ukraine. Um, uh, so it, it was tough, no English. Uh, her husband just uh, said, hey, I'll, I'll see you guys later. And uh, 30 years later, we're still kind of, uh, I don't know where he's at. But anyways, she was abandoned here, welfare, uh, food stamps, all of that, plus a baby. Uh, I think uh, I, I was the baby. And uh, yeah, she had to put me somewhere, put me in school, kinder, all that. Um, uh, the government really, really helped out. People would uh, donate food to her, right? People would see her and feel so bad they would donate food to her. Uh, people at the bus stop saw her so many times that they were like, do you just need a ride? And uh, she did trust some people and they did end up giving her rides and stuff. So it was a grind for my mom. She didn't feel what it felt like. Uh, like looking back, she's like, how did I do that? How did I do that? Now she like hikes on random Tuesdays with a neighbor and drives her Mercedes Benz, which I'm like, yo, mom, please, please, please. Um, like I, I actually downgraded my car. Um, but uh, eventually I remembered my mom telling me about Susie Orman and financial literacy. My mom, I wish she does wish she acted more on hearing it um, because sometimes hearing it is not enough. So what I'm doing right now, it's, it's, not enough. I haven't found the perfect combination to really motivate people to right after they hear this to start within the next 30 seconds because latency, how long it takes for you to start is probably the greatest variable in your future returns when it comes to your investments in life. How long it takes you to start is more important than um, what stocks you pick. It is the key variable because people go to my workshops and they don't start for and they don't start for like two years, three years. I have friends that I've donated my time to, and uh, five years later they're like, "Oh my gosh, the market crashed," and I'm like, "Bro, you still would have doubled your money," and they're like, "Oh." Anyways, I ha I have some resentment. Um, my mom now is investing. She's living a semi uh, work optional life. Uh, she does what she wants to. Um, chapter one point five. But why not? 
uh, we have to go back, right? Oh, before we talk about the, but how we have to talk about, but, but the, why not? So I just said, like, it is very hard to get people to start investing. It's kind of uh, scary. And we'll talk about those fears, but why the heck do we engage in behaviors? Because investing is a series of behaviors. Well, over here, we see uh, some pizza, right? Pizza tastes good. So we get reinforced right away. We take a bite. We're like, mm, that's so good. You take another bite because the first one was so good. Uh, we laugh. Oh, this feels good. So we're more likely to maybe engage in going to watch that certain movie or hang out with those people more. Um, sometimes we scream. If it gets us what we want, we're going to keep screaming. Uh, video games, automatic reinforcement. We're playing that game. Boom, lights, uh, cameras, uh, new level, all that. Um, down there, uh, you, you know, sexy time. It, that, that's also reinforcing some of the time, right? You know what I'm talking about? Um, it, it is uh, less reinforcing for, for ladies, uh, heterosexual ladies, from what I hear. I've been, I've been studying the game, watching some TED Talks, um, but um, that's also a different, uh, a different workshop. Um, roller coasters, sensory, attention, people looking at you, right? Uh, people paying attention to you. Uh, that makes us engage in those behaviors over and over and over again. Awesome. So what the heck? Investing, investing doesn't do that. Investing is not reinforcing. Investing might actually uh, decrease your behaviors for the future, or it might decrease the value of investing. People who started investing a year ago, they put all this money into the market. And guess what? They're in the same place, if not a little bit less. What's that going to do? Are they going to invest next month the same amount of money? No. They're going to ignore the data, ignore the science, ignore the history, and trust their reinforcement history instead. Were they re rewarded right away or not? Not. So they stop investing. This is what happens time and time again. But there's a lot of people here who are behaviorally savvy. Understanding this is key, right? Reinforcement is not the ultimate principle to focus on all the time, right? We have to go outside our behaviorism framework um, or go so deep inside of it that we unlock a new gateway where maybe investing is so reinforcing because I get to talk about it and make so many new friends, right? It's not my stocks going up or down. It's the community I build with other people who are doing the same thing as me. That's probably what's sustaining my behavior. But also uh, for, I work with a lot of teenagers as well, uh, saying, hey, clean your room and you get a candy or whatever, that, that's kind of degrading. That doesn't really work. And, and I don't really do that with younger kids. But, you know, it, it can it can get the job done real quick. But usually teenagers will be like, um, what? I'm not doing that. So you have to think in terms of rewards instead of immediate gratification reinforcement. Hey, you clean your room three days out of five, meaning you could skip two days this week, and then you're going to get a trip to Disney. So the trip to Disney is not a reinforcer. It's the idea of Disney. I clean my room. Let's talk about going to Disney right after you cleaned room. That's um, the reinforcer right there. But the reward, that just uh, um, that's later down the road, right? It doesn't have as much power as something that's immediate. So it's all later down the road. You put $1,000 into the market, the next day you're going to have $998. And you're going to be like, oh, wow. And even then, you still have to wait 24 hours for the market to open. So that is way too slow to create any sustaining behavior. That's not like taking a bite of pizza, which even if you're full and your body's sweating and you're saying, stop, it is so good and you can't stop. We got to work on that, Georgie. Um, okay, let's move on over here to confabulate. The second reason we don't invest. Now we're really kind of going outside the scope of behaviorism. Confabulation is a psychological kind of phenomenon we noticed. Um, it was uh, popularly noticed, well, across everything. But my favorite example is there is a room full of Democrats. Okay. And I'm not picking on Democrats, but there's a room full of Democrats. They are provided... Um, uh, basically like uh, newspaper articles and all sorts of things about welfare reform. And everyone is all on board. They're saying, hey, this politician, let's just say uh, uh, Bill Clinton over here said that uh, this is going to happen for kids. And Barack Obama over here said kids will have the option to go to school like this now. Um, so parents will get this much money from the government. What do you guys think about this? And everyone was like, this is amazing, right? It's a research experiment. So there's always a punchline. Wait for it. Here it comes. Um, they were then asked, 
Why do you believe this is amazing? And they all gave a huge list of reasons. Well, this just connects to my values so deeply. Okay, here's the punchline. You ready? They used fake articles of fake uh, candidates. It was actually Republican uh, opinions and points. All it had to be done was it had to be framed as a Democratic plan. Oh, my gosh. And if you think Democrats are the only ones, this worked just as well on Republicans. Exactly. So Republicans were given Democratic a plan and everyone agreed. So interesting how that works, right? Like we really don't know why we believe what we believe and how long we've been, le been believing it. They, another word for confabulation, another AKA, is if you've been studying for the BCBA exam, that aka term um is uh honest lying so you don't know that you're not telling the truth um so you'll say things like well the reason i'm not investing right now is because uh investing is gambling well investing is risky so i'm not going to do it you can lose all your money i'm not going to do it um you can um i only invest in what i can lose and i can't lose anything well donald trump 2016 can't be investing right now well joe biden 2020 can't be investing right now and suddenly everyone becomes like an economics ex expert um and they're like well it's because of rising inflation that i can't invest that's going to impact the market uh negatively uh okay um how many experts here's my question how many experts and be honest with yourselves you could you could answer in your head or type it in how many experts have you listened to in the past few years how many hours have you spent listening to experts who've been investing for decades and you you want to go across uh across people right you want different philosophies and how many of them said all of these things the answer is going to be probably very, very, very close to zero. And if uh, they said something else, it was probably uh, it was probably that guy, Richard. Uh, what's his name? Richard. Rich dad, poor dad guy. It's OK. Um, but uh, that guy always says the market's about to crash. The market's about to crash. The market's about to crash. If you say that enough times, you know, uh, there, there's a funny saying in the stock market world that um, 3000 of the last 20 market crashes were predicted correctly. Right. If you say it enough, eventually your timing will be impeccable and the market does crash when you say that it crashes. Uh, Donald Trump got elected. Stocks went up. Joe Biden um, right now, uh, the stocks are up about 12 uh, percent since he got elected, which is a pretty decent number. So uh, Barack Obama, I remember he got elected and uh, it was like, I think, like a Republican campaign. Gas prices, gas prices uh, kind of sounds familiar, right? Uh, I mean, not that gas prices aren't going up, but uh, I remember that. And the stock market actually went up way more way more percentage wise during Barack Obama's reign uh, for first like 48 months or whatever uh, than compared to Donald Trump's, which we all remember was a amazing market, right? But it wasn't as amazing as Barack Obama's uh, first four years percentage wise. Uh, Bill Clinton's uh, market was great too. Uh, Ronald Reagan's not so great, even though we remember him as this like economic uh, type, financially savvy type of president. Uh, because at the end of the day, the president does not determine stock price Unless you're Donald Trump and you say something really quick about um, uh, Nokia or whatever it was. Oh, Kodak. He mentioned Kodak stock went straight up, but that's not the market. That's one stock. Um, okay. So we're not going to confabulate. We're not going to make up reasons that we think that we believe when we don't. So chapter two, but how? How do we actually invest? So let's create an account. Here's my task analysis, which is a way of breaking down a difficult task. It's not that difficult uh, into uh, small concrete steps. So I posted a link on financialism uh, on my Instagram page, financialism. There's a link in my bio. You click that right there at the top. It probably says register for this workshop. And right underneath that, it says create an investing account with Weeble. It said that right before you made this. All you do is you click that link. It is an affiliate link. Uh, let me disclaim. So I do get a paid with a free stock at no expense to you. And you also get those stocks. Um, so you click that link. Um, you register. It's a KYC process. Know your customer. This is how they prove that you're a real human being and not just someone trying to cheat the system and do fraud. You wait about 24 hours to get approved. Some people get approved within five minutes. Some people get approved within 24 hours. Deposit. 
$100, like my mom said, now you don't have to do a hundred. You could do $1. And if you just want the free stocks, you get about like 40 to $50 in free stocks. That's about a, a movie, two movie passes, uh, a pizza and a water bottle back in 1990. That's how much they're giving out. And they, uh, some people say, well, how could they afford to do this? Um, PayPal, this is the PayPal model. When PayPal uh, was a business, um, I keep thinking about that insect that crawled in my lip ah, while I was sleeping in the middle. PayPal um, is a business that was giving out for new accounts and referrals, $20 to each person. So they are just imitating uh, PayPal. A lot of uh, places do this. Banks do this. Um, brokerage accounts do this. Um, uh, credit cards do this. Uh, so we'll talk about that later. That's a really cool side hustle um, where everyone benefits. Um, but anyways, um, step five, collect your free stocks, because as soon as you deposit that money and it processes, you're going to get some free stocks. Um, and then six, sign up a friend, right? Like uh, might as well triple your profits because um, if uh, your friend uses your link, not only will they get about 40 to $50, but you will also get um, another 40 to $50. And Weeble always does like wild promotions. Like I don't qualify for these because uh, I teamed up with Weeble, but you would get uh, a free share of Apple, for example, if three people register. So that's your mom, your dad, and uh, your uncle you don't talk to, uh, right? So just sign up three friends and they all get like 40 bucks for doing this. But anyways, this is how you would start. And this is the only place you will get reinforced for anything investing wise, because it will happen right away. You get your free stocks and you're good to go. The first two stocks you receive will happen before you deposit any money. So you'll get two stocks that are worth probably $3 each. So cool, $6, maybe seven. And then the rest is the lottery. So you're going to get six to 12 free stocks and they can be usually, I tell people it's around $40 or so because each stock has to be $7 or more. It might be like $6.90. Uh, I had a friend at work. He did this, and he got a, a $3,000 Amazon share. Very lucky. Uh, so that could happen, but the odds of that are low. So I just tell people you get like $40 to $50. Pretty sweet for three minutes of work. Um, buying a stock. This is how it's going to look like on Weeble. So the, yeah, this is just all free stocks that I've been receiving. So um, don't look at that portfolio just for educational purposes only, right? But yes, this can happen. You could put $5,000 in and in the short run, it's going to be down $2,000. That's okay. That's okay. Don't worry about that. We could talk about risks. Actually, we are going to talk about risks um, of that nature in just a minute. And then we'll open up the Q&A so we can discuss whatever else is on your mind, dividends, retirement accounts, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so very important is... Uh, to decide which account you're doing this in. Are you doing this in your brokerage account, your individual account, or are you doing this in your retirement account, your IRA or your Roth IRA? There is a difference between the two. Um, and a lot of times people like to prioritize their retirement accounts uh, to take care of their future selves. Now, the key to wealth, I have an arrow right there. It says reoccurring investment. I hope you guys see that. Um, that arrow right there, that is what will change your life. So whenever we teach uh, a client, like when I'm working with kids on the autism spectrum, I uh, make sure I have a reinforcement schedule. So they're not just going to get a toy or access to a fun activity or to get out of an activity 100% of the time. Okay. They're going to get it based on a certain schedule. Um, so in the beginning, when you're teaching a, a person a new skill, you're going to uh, reinforce them every single time they do a new behavior, right? You do, um, you go to the gym, I'm going to give you a huge like praise. I'm going to shout you out on Instagram and all that. Everyone at the gym is going to clap for you and you're going to feel really good. But eventually you kind of want to get rid of those kind of a uh, supports. You know what I mean? So with reoccurring investments, you set up the frequency of your self-investing. So what I do is I do every single month on the 24th. Why the 24th? There's actually a top secret. I'm just kidding. It's no top secret. It's my grandma's birthday, July 24th. So every 24th, I invest into stocks uh, based on my grandma's birthday. Can't forget it. I do it by hand, but this will actually do it automated. Automation has been the key to growth. Um, in the past, it actually cost money to invest like this. Now it's free. So please take advantage, especially if you're in the United States, use your privilege because having privilege is different than knowing how to use it. 
Um, here we go. Now, some things happen inherently with privilege, right? Like, oh, okay, you're more likely to get a certain job if your last name is this, right? Without people actually even seeing you. And there's studies on that. Uh, but some people don't know how to use their privilege. So continuing with buying a stock, you type in the name. So here's Disney, for example. And uh, these are all the things used to kind of distract you. And it doesn't distract you. Like some people do this for day trading, flipping stocks. They set different rules, rule governed behavior for their stocks. So I almost always use market. Market will allow me to purchase the stock for what it cost in that moment. Sometimes it'll be a little bit off. Um, you can end up with missing deals with the limit one. So say Disney cost $120. It's around there right now. But you want to buy Disney at $110. $10. So you're like, I'm not willing to pay 120 for Disney. I will do 110. Why? I don't know. You, you just decided that arbitrary. It's just an example. So you set a limit order for 110. As soon as Disney hits $110, it'll start automatically buying your preset amount. But you can also end up missing deals with this. What if Disney hits $110.12? Well, rules are rules, and you will miss out on buying that stock, and maybe it'll go to 300 and you're like, wow, I would just 12 cents. So I don't mess around with that. But the benefits of that is, hey, maybe you think you're going on a vacation, or you're going off the grid, or you live a work optional life, or you're traveling, no internet for two months two months. What if there's a stock market crash? You don't want to sit out. You don't want to miss it. So you could put all of these orders in. And just in case there's a crash or something happens while you're living off the grid, it'll do it for you. So that's pretty awesome. Makes things really easy. I love that Weeble has all of these features and it's just like a toggle. That's all. Um, so the last thing that you would do, it's a new feature uh, for investing in the United States. I think other countries are trying to do this, um, but not all brokerages have this feature weeble does my main brokerage merrill edge does not have this feature and i'm really disappointed and i go to the gym with the merrill edge guys and i always complain and they're like drop it off in our um suggestions box and i'm like <sighs> anyways um fractional share say you do think that 120 dollars is a fair price for disney right? It did go as high as like 160 at a certain point. So maybe you're thinking, all right, I'm going to go ahead, but I want to, I can't, I can't afford $120. I have a hundred. I'll do that. Um, so you could buy a piece of Disney stock, uh, which is really, really cool. This makes investing really, uh, what's the word? Inclusive. Uh, it has never been this inclusive in the United States before. Um, actually, you would be punished for kind of not having hundreds of uh, hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars for investing in the past, because every trade you make, you had to pay six to $10. That's gone. That's gone now. So it's, it's pretty awesome. It, it makes me really angry that people are not investing uh, or using their privilege, right? Like, I'm like, okay, you have the privilege. It's a skill set. I don't blame you. Like it's a skill set to recognize the advantages that you have. A lot of people they they don't want to focus on luck, um, but we are very lucky that we have this option of fractional shares. You can't do this in other countries, and you still have to pay those fees for simply participating, which knocks out a lot of people. If you have twenty dollars a month, you're not going to pay six to ten dollars just to buy uh, ten to twenty dollars of a stock. Well, in the United States, you get you can do that, and um, you are paying a very small invisible fee, but it won't make a difference um, at all. Um, some people argue that it does, but it's nothing like it was before. So for me, I consider it practically free. Um, so there it is. That, that's how you buy $100 of uh, Disney or any other stock that you want. You could do $5 at a minimum. So that's pretty awesome. You could break down $100 into like 20 different stocks. It's, it's phenomenal. This is, this is the new age. Um, okay, so chapter three. I'm scared. I get it. I get it. Let, let's talk about our private events, our thoughts, our, our beliefs. They're not they're less beliefs and they're more attitudes because I could change your beliefs, but I can't change your attitude. If you're in a state of fear, you're in a state of fear. Um, 
knowing more information might decrease that, but it probably won't. And that's what the science says. So we're still trying to find a way of how to change attitudes and opinions and all of that. And obviously, it's a multi-million dollar, maybe billion dollar industry, and it's called politics. Safety concerns. So, okay, you have to give your social security to these brokerage firms, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, et cetera, et cetera, Weevil included. Um, you have to tell them how much you make. You have to tell them your net worth. You have to tell them your address. That's a lot of information. People get scared. People get nervous. My mom's like, can you stop telling me to make all these investing accounts? I don't want an extra $50 or an extra $100. And I'm like, remember back in the night uh, in the nineties, when you came to the United States, what would she say? And I'm like, use your privilege. So my mom actually went ahead and made these accounts. But anyways, um, they are insured. So your money is insured. Um, it's uh, the securities, I forgot the word, I forgot the word, commission. So they protect up to half a million dollars of your stocks if in case the something happens to the firm itself. And they're not going to protect you if you buy Tesla for, say, $1,000 and it goes to zero. That's on you. But they are going to protect you if uh, something happens with uh, like the actual platform. So you don't have to worry about that. They will give you your money back. Um, same with cash. The bank does this, but it's called FDIC insurance up to a quarter of a million dollars. Um, so let's go on a little further. Uh, here's the difference between the two. Oh, my image got removed. It's okay. It's okay. It's probably a picture of me. Um, what it covers. Uh, so brokerage held securities, exactly what I said. That just means your stocks and any cash in that account up to 500K. And if there's cash up to 250K. And this applies when the brokerage firm fails. Um, and you receive the, mo the money up to these limits based on the account. This I've never heard of this happening. I've never heard of this happening. This does happen with crypto and they don't have this type of insurance. You're out of luck. I'm out of luck with my crypto on two platforms. Two platforms went under. Crypto is a whole different ball game. If you have crypto on those platforms, please uh, get it off those platforms and transfer it to a wallet. Uh, I do have other workshops, but those are paid that talk about like crypto and wallets and getting becoming a part of the Web3 space. Um, different TED Talk. Okay, safety concerns, and we're about to open up Q&A in about uh, five minutes or so. So safety concerns, uh, the broker does need to comply with tax laws. It's actually a rule that they need that information from you. Uh, this also protects them from terrorism, fraud, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the government wants to basically track all of your potential income sources. But just because you're investing doesn't mean you're making an income right? How the heck do uh, billionaires not pay taxes? Or well, I mean, they pay some somewhat of taxes, but how do they have money to spend, right? Well, they borrow from their stocks and that's more investing 102 stuff. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, your uh, net worth does not mean you can spend that much money. Bill, oh, Jeff Bezos does not have $100 billion to go spend in a day. He has to sell his Amazon stocks in order to do that. And as soon as he does, he pays a tax on that. So while you're accumulating wealth, you don't pay taxes on it. And there's actually ways to withdraw that money later on in life, even if you have $10 million in there, without paying any taxes that not just billionaires can do, but all of us can do. So this system, there, there are... Um, things in it that actually benefit everyday folks who are not billionaires or millionaires. Uh, you could have 500K, that's still a lot of money. You could have 100K, that's a lot of money, but you can withdraw tax-free if you know how. And that depends on what account it's in, like a IRA or a Roth IRA, a Roth 401K. But there's also ways to withdraw it tax-free from just a regular taxable account. Um, market crashes, that's another fear that everyone has. Well, um, everyone said stocks are over when it was COVID. It's over. It's the end of the world. Bank loans in 2008. Well, stocks are dead. Uh, st stop investing. 9-11. Uh, the world's going into chaos. Stop investing. Dot-com bubble. All these internet stocks. Uh, stop investing. Uh, the peso crashed 50%. Anyone remember that? That was in the 90s in Mexico. Um, it happened again in uh, 1998 with uh, Russian currency, the uh, rubli. Um, it, it crashed. I speak Russian, by the way. I know. I know Russia's doing a lot of awful things right now. Uh, I don't know where you stand on that, but terrible stuff. My mom's on the phone with Ukraine every single morning, two hours talking to our relatives. Uh, it, it's it's bad. Whatever you think it is, multiply it by 100. It's worse. But I'm not going to go into that. But it, it's bad. Um, like 
that uh, all of these crises don't compare to what's happening over there because at the end of the day money's just paper um it, you have to make relationships and bonds that bonds is not a stock word oh man uh, i can't resist the let it go let it go georgie but yeah relationships is is most important because if one of these crashes actually did end the whole system as we know it we still have each other that's the most important thing um so don't get don't get too attached um Balance is about attachment and reattachment, not about voiding yourself of, of uh, attachment, right? Like uh, the monks who kind of sacrifice everything and just live with nothing. That That's okay, cool. But I think what's really cool is falling deep in passionate love and then being able to break apart from that. Or um, well, I hope my girlfriend doesn't do that to me. Um, or money, right? The market goes up, it goes to 3 million and then it drops to 1 million. Then you're really, really sad. But hey, you're a million dollars richer, right? People don't think that way. Um, Black Monday, stocks crash like 27% in a single day. So that's more than a quarter of your money gone in a single day. And stocks came back. We got off the gold standard. Uh, the Greek government crisis, presidential assassinations, and much, much, much more. Now, I'm not making light of these events, which ruin so many lives. But if you kept investing through these events, that's how you get to that 12% average return. You don't get that return if you're just investing when it feels good. You have to be investing and watching your money go down every single month. And that's normal. That's what's happening right now. This is what happened during COVID. And that ultimately doubled my money, right? That's where my account went from 80,000 to 180,000 because I kept on investing and then stocks boomed like they always do. I don't, people forget, they always think it's the last time. If it's the last time, trust me, you're not thinking about money. You're thinking about survival. You're thinking about living in the wild. Um, you're going to need uh, friends, maybe guns and weapons, and uh, you're going to have to know how to get food and stuff. Uh, watch out for uh, uh, fun guy. Those things can possess you. Um, chapter four, create a plan. Here we go. The last section. Um, the other sections are very short. Um, operationally defining financial freedom. Take a moment. Think about what that means to you. What it means to me is that my investments fund my lifestyle. That's it. That's financial freedom to me. I don't believe in financial independence because uh, I'm never financially independent. Stocks rely on the labor of people. We're all connected. So I don't believe anyone's independent. No one made it on their own. Um, but financial freedom, you could be free. Some people are not free even if they have all the money that they could possibly need. Some people still are consumed by making more money when they have 10 mil, 20 mil, and they still keep going. It's a game. That's okay. But do they feel secure? The answer is no. Um, how much money do you need per month? You need to know the answer to this question. How much do you need per year? Great. So um, how much do you need to have invested to cover those expenses? Um, my, my rule of thumb is for every $100,000 you have invested, you have one month that you can cover. Okay, that, that's my rule of thumb. Now, for other people, it might be $50,000. Um, you're not going to spend that money. You're going to sell off a very tiny portion of your stocks, and your stocks will then regenerate over time. Um, there's studies on this that this worked for 30 year periods and even 50 year periods. Um, how much do you have to invest per month to make it happen? Okay, those are all questions you need to discover and think about. And we could talk more about that in the QA if you'd like. Um, Okay, so rule of thumb, a person who can invest 50% of their income, no matter the amount, you could be LeBron James, I don't know how much he makes, but let's say he makes a million bucks a year. If he can invest $500,000 of that 1 million for the next 15 years, his stocks will be able to cover his expenses. If you're making, uh, if you can live off of, if you're making say $20,000 a year and you found a way to live off of it, then you have to save $10,000 a year and invest it. And then in 15 years, maybe 17 years, you'll be able to live off of it for a very, very, very long time, 30 to 50 years. And some people believe it is infinity. Um, your first $1,000. I don't know if, if everyone is there yet, but if you're not and you're at 9,000 or at 50,000, an extra 1,000 is not going to hurt you. So field trip rewards guide, and then we will uh, open up uh, questions. We're actually pretty 
okay on time. So here we go. We're going to wrap up, uh, but let me show you uh, how this works. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I hope you guys are all feeling uh, very, very good about this. I'm glad that some of you are taking advantage and are writing in your questions. Uh, so I can kind of glance at them and have a lot of ideas. Um, and I'm about to show you guys how you can make a thousand dollars. And uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, I know, I know. I know if, if I followed me on the internet, I'd be like, this guy's scamming. I don't know how to package this, but uh, hopefully uh, at this point uh, we built some rapport. So you guys will be like, oh man, this is actually the real deal. Um, so here we go. This is what it looks like. There's a link in my bio for this. Um, let me share my screen one more time with you guys. Here we go. This is actually true. This works. I did it myself. I know it sounds scary making money on the internet, but hey, we're in the 21st century, so it does happen. Now, not everyone will be able to claim that much, but if you're in the United States, you will all be able to claim something. Uh, so check this out. This is a rewards guide. I created this. There's a link in my bio to this uh, with the explanation how it works. So there's financialism, rewards list. Hey, if you click that subscribe button, it'll actually take you to my YouTube uh, where I do talk like about uh, NFTs, crypto, stocks, uh, sometimes uh, behavior analysis and uh, the behavior of investing a little bit deeper. So this is what it looks like. You would click that Weeble investing and boom, you see um, on the right side, that's actually what I received by doing these uh, bonuses. Weeble is also giving out an extra $5 for crypto. So in about three minutes, you get about 40 to $55. Transparency, always written at the bottom of this rewards guide. I receive a free stock for a referral. Here's another one the capital one quick silver card only do this if your uh, credit score is uh about 720 minimum i would uh, probably do this if my credit score was 750 but you will legit get 200 dollars for spending 500 in the next three months this is a great card i use it myself um there's no annual fees on it um so that's an extra 200 dollars and if you have a, a loved one, like maybe your partner, uh, and they have a decent credit score, you use your link on them, and they get an extra one hundred. They get an extra two hundred, and you get an extra one fifty. So sorry to yeah. interrupt, but I'm not seeing any of yours. This screen sharing on this whole part. Oh, okay. It just keeps spinning, and I don't know if you can either send the info or. Hmm. Um, Let me stop I'm not getting it. Yeah, no worries. Can anyone else? try it again? So sorry. Yeah, no worries. Is, is there anyone who can see? Oh, okay, okay, Fran, Fran, I don't know if that was Francis who just spoke. Yeah, I think it was Francis who just spoke. Uh, yes. Okay, some people can see it. So Francis, it might be um, your version of Zoom. So Zoom had an update last night. Um, so that could be it. If you want to like hop out and hop in real quick and update your Zoom. I don't know if you updated it or not. Um, or maybe. Oh, okay. I don't want to miss anything, but I didn't. That sounded pretty important what you just said. So yeah, no, you can <laughs> I don't know how to miss out. Up. Yeah, no worries. You, you'll my internet's me. been down since yesterday. I'm on my phone. I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry it's, at all. But, yeah, but I really appreciate it's been you. it's really been a bummer that they cannot fix our internet for two days. Oh, that, all I, right, yeah, I'm gonna I, try. It. I'll try to pop back out and hope I get yeah, back in. Thanks. Yeah, totally. No worries. So this is the Capital One's Quick Silver card. It's a great card. Like I don't see why uh why you wouldn't uh why you wouldn't have it. Um, but uh. Transparency, I do receive compensation, right? Uh, that 150, you would also get it. So why not? Uh, this is great. Like this is this is what capitalism is about, right? This is what it should be. One nation has sugar, the other has salt. They trade, everyone thinks they ripped off the other person, and meaning everyone's really, really happy. Um let, let's uh, keep scrolling. Fidelity. Fidelity is giving, this is very time sensitive. All of these are time sensitive. I'm not trying to do the marketing thing and put the pressure on you uh, because I get rewarded for some of these. I don't get rewarded for all of them. So transparency, I don't receive anything from this one, for example. Please do the ones where I do receive money. Um, but you get $100 uh, for depositing $50 free money, right? They do take this down. So last time I did this, they took it down within a week. So if too many people are taking advantage, they will take it down. Um, or they have a timeline that they don't talk about. Discover card is a staple, a staple card for everyone in the United States to have. Credit score can be a little bit lower than the Capital One. Um, I would say 720 is still a very safe number, maybe 700, but I would I would be at least 700 uh, and 20. Uh, you get 5% cash back when you go to gas, when you go to Target. It is seasonal. So about every four months, it changes where it gives you cash back. But the most important part, it gives you 
$100 for simply getting the card. And then if someone in your family does it, guess what? That's $300 for your family because when they use your link, not only did you get $100 from using mine, um, you also get $100 uh, from when your partner or your friend or whoever use or your coworker uses your link and then they get $100. So uh, the family, if you're using it within the family, that's $300. And if you have a family of five, that's, uh, that's a lot of numbers. That's $600. Um, so really, really quick, one quick hack about the Discover card. Uh, sometimes I uh, write little hacks right here in my uh, rewards guide is if you buy, say you want gas, right? You could buy a gift card and max it out to the 1,500 if you roll that way and you get 5% cash back on your gift cards. Um, if you want to kind of be a little frugal, give someone a Target gift card, you can get 5% uh, discount on that. So that's really, really cool. Um, there, there's a, there's another really good one here. It's the Charles Schwab one. Again, even if you don't use Charles Schwab and you choose to use Weeble, which I think uh, Weeble has a lot of advantages, uh, this Charles Schwab one will give you literally for three minutes of work, all of them are about three minutes of work, will give you $101, $101. Dollars, guys, for literally three to four minutes of work, all you do is deposit fifty dollars, and it gives you one hundred and one dollars. So right now we just made I don't know at least a thousand dollars. But wait, it, that's not it. I I don't even get anything from this, guys. So if you think I'm like a a sleazy internet dude, I don't get anything from this. But some of them I do. So don't forget to use the ones where I do, especially Weeble, because uh that one is actually a great investing platform. Um, Charles Schwab is catching up, but Charles Schwab and Fidelity don't have one thing that Weeble does. Actually, a few things. Um, one is crypto. Uh, the other is a uh, crypto wallet is coming to uh, Weeble where you can take and store your crypto off of the platform um, to keep it safer. And uh, there's paper trading on Weeble, meaning you get a fake $1 million and you could buy stocks with it just to see what it feels like. So that's a pretty cool feature of Weeble that Charles Schwab and Fidelity and even Vanguard doesn't have. Vanguard's not even on this list. Uh, I, I have a problem with Vanguard. They're great platform and all that. And I appreciate Jack Bogle, the founder of Vanguard. He revolutionized this whole industry, but there, there's problems there. Um, $15 with, uh, with public. Um, so there, there's $15 with public. And um, the last one is, uh, where is it? Uh, $10 with Coinbase. But why I'm sharing Coinbase is because you could get like 30 to $50 by doing their little quizzes about crypto. So let me stop sharing right there. Um, this is going to be on a replay i hope i hope um it, it is being recorded so this is going to be on a replay and i will uh, do my best to send this out to all of you within 24 hours um however uh sometimes glitches happen so i'm definitely glad you're here um so sometimes it just doesn't work out but hopefully it doesn't if you have any questions right any questions about anything at all please message me on instagram just make sure that you're talking to the real me and you could tell i'll probably say something about pokemon but you can tell what's a real account and what's a fake account so now that all of you are one thousand dollars richer right? Uh, before you even invested, uh, we can finish up right now. There's a few more uh, slides and we can open up that q and I know I said that like nine minutes ago. I just get carried away and so excited. Um, okay, let me share my uh, screen one more time. Hold up one second. Dun, 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 dun. You guys are a beautiful audience. I can't see most of you, but you, you are very beautiful. Uh, so here we go. Okay. So here we are once again, we can do it, right? So when you do make those rewards guides uh, and you click those links, please, please share it with, uh, uh, please, please share it with uh, your friends, share it with your loved ones. Like if, if we all don't invest, um, we're, we're kind of going to be stuck in this like stage of capitalism where like, we're, we're not going to the next level. I want to go to Mars guys, but hopefully all of you will come with me. Um, but share when you start, when you create your investing account, it actually works like, uh, modeling to others, like, Hey, I made my investing account. I did it. Ask me how, and then send them your referral link to Weeble and both of you get like $40 from that. That's amazing, right? Like it's never been a better time to invest except for yesterday. It's always better the earlier we start, but that's okay if we're just starting now. Um, so I hope that that uh, kind of motivates you. And please, when you do share, tag your boy, 
and your on your Instagrams be like at financialism. That way, hopefully, I could see it, and your friends could be like, oh, okay, that's where you kind of learn this from. Let me follow this uh, B BCBA dude who talks about finance. Um, sharing is caring. Uh, finally, I do have a gift shop and we're we're all done here. This is uh, I have an NFT 101 workshop. I got in a lot of trouble for this one because people don't want to talk about NFTs. They consider them very high risk. I see a lot of opportunity, mostly in flipping rather than holding. NFTs are non-fungible tokens. In other words, you can't hold it, right? It's on the internet. Um, it's just images on the internet, videos on the internet. So why the heck would you pay uh uh, there's Frida right there. Someone paid me $1,000 for that image of Frida. It was $944. And I literally bought that Frida five days earlier for $180. So that was a really cool flip that I did with NFTs. Darth Vader's, uh, they were $80. Worst case scenario, you got an uncommon one, which is going for about 90 bucks today. But at the height of the market, it was $140. And if you were lucky, you had an 18% chance of hitting the ultra rare Darth Vader, who's going for a thousand bucks right now. Uh, of course, these are Disney licensed NFTs. Uh, you, there's also uh, making uh, wallets uh, with uh, with Ethereum, um, and like uh, Weibo will help you out with that. So that's something I'm very passionate about. I get in trouble every time I post about it on Instagram. People say you scamming uh, NFTs are a scam, blah blah blah. But hey, if people are willing to pay um, like two thousand extra dollars for a bag that says Gucci on it, when there's another bag with the same exact material and dead animal, um, and it doesn't say Gucci on it. They, like, oh, suddenly it's not worth $2,000. So Disney, you're paying for the brand. Uh, Frida and also the brand Historical Figures and the Rewind Collective, you're paying for that, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so last step, I also have a stock investing course. If this wasn't enough for you and you want to learn more, uh, just send me a message on either Facebook or on Instagram. These are testimonials. I have exactly 150 students who have taken it in the past. So you guys can do that. I'll hook you up with a code or something like that. So I, I think, uh, some of you this applies for, right? Especially if you want to like uh, skip ahead and learn more advanced stuff. And we meet up about every other week on Wednesdays. That's just an extra perk of the course that I have. Uh, some people are asking questions, so I'm, I'm pausing awkwardly to read that. I'm, I'm, I'm not glitching. I, I am a real person. I am not a robot. Um, oh, Elon, Elon, I, sorry. Um, anyways, uh, these are just some testimonials. So everyone has a great time in my workshops and my courses. The course is basically my baby. Um, it takes you from A to Z to investing, but you guys have everything you need to start now. Um, and then if you want to level up, you can choose to level up by purchasing a course. Just send me a message. I'm not really advertising it on Instagram right now because uh, I do want to focus on providing as much free value as possible. But I do think that if I had something like this when I started in 2015, I don't think I know I would be about 100 to $200,000 richer because I had some behavioral practices that I did not engage in. And I finally created a system in 2018. And if only I created that earlier in life, I would be in a much better position position now. So it's definitely worth the money. And with all of the affiliate links and all that, like uh, the Charles Schwab and all that, if you do that, you're basically getting the course for free anyways. Uh, typically, I do sell it for a high price point, uh, about $500. So that turns a lot of people off. It is definitely worth it. But for you guys, uh, send me a DM if you're truly interested, and I will cut that price uh, pretty significantly. Uh, for people in my workshops, I usually give a cheaper price because we already built rapport, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, because what I don't want happening is people buying the course and then not doing it. Uh, that actually about 10% of people who purchase it don't do it. And I'm like, you paid the money. Why are you not doing it? Like you could meet with me every Wednesday. Uh, and of course, when the market crashes, a lot of people meet up with me on Wednesday nights and they're like, okay, just remind us how we should feel. And I'm like, here you go, guys. And uh, we move on. So definitely uh, take advantage of uh, those Wednesday night Zooms. If you do choose to purchase the course, it will pay for itself. And uh, I think... Uh, these testimonials speak for themselves. And let's open up the Q and A. So I am going to prioritize first um, whoever uh, asks a question out loud, and then I will go through some of the older questions. So fight for the microphone. This is my favorite part. Go battle. All right. I'm here. Hey. Wait, are uh, you still Are you still um, sharing screen? I am sharing screen. Oh. Uh, but that's okay. okay. 
So or turn. Okay. So the biggest thing is what you've taught is that it's easy to get in. Yeah. It's easy to get in. Now what? What's 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 going on after that? So I don't have no idea. I I I'm, I and I even want to replay and go back and say, okay, buy these things. The Schwab was the fifty dollars. I'll make a hundred one. The the public.com fifteen dollars will get me. So I okay. love what I when I go back and see that list because my my feed was not good right now. I told you my internet's yeah. compromised. But so great, I got a step to step. I'm working. To, I've seen you enough that I have a little bit of trust. You're uh, here for us. I actually almost want to believe that. I, I think I do, but <laughs> here you are. But I really, so so I'm excited to see this behaviorist person on get that we are, we are, we bull, we are bullheaded. And, yeah. and, and as much as I've been listening, I can't jump my trust to get you to, to really fully trust any of this because I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. So how do I analyze how do I move after the buying and feel like I wasn't just taken? I don't even know. Yeah. So the whole thing here, right. And manage have, it. Yeah. You have to listen to the experts, like not just people like me, right. Who are just people on Instagram who happen to get lucky with the algorithm and get a whole bunch of followers. And it seems more legitimate. You have to go to the people who are 90 years old and have been doing this since the forties and fifties. I'm talking like Warren Buffett. And then when you hear them say the exact same thing, uh, buy quality, hold it for the rest of your life, and then let it pay for life later on. Uh, that's the big key here. So I'm a big advocate of index funds. Like uh, I'm going to type in the ticker symbol VOO. That's what you can purchase, not financial advice, on Webull. And you get the top 500 companies in the United States, which about every, um, every uh, sorry, uh, nine years or so, they double in value. So you're getting that. It's it's a slow and steady rate. Uh, rate of like growth, but index funds do get the job done over the long term. It's a great thing to leave behind for future generations as well without them. Do I sell? Do I buy? Uh, plenty of people who've been in this since uh, Great Depression babies believe that they can hold on to this after experiencing that generation of scarcity. So if those babies can do it, then I think anyone else can do it. So holding those index funds is key. When it comes to believing that those index funds will pay off, that comes to a matter of doing enough reading and seeing that every expert is saying the same exact thing. When you see a consensus among experts, then you can take a bet on that. Um, and I think- okay, uh, So can you uh, step by step that when you say VOO, like that's another language to me. Sure. So when I, or is it all, is it, will it be on the recording um, that maybe I missed that? Um, so I'm going to Webull, I'm opening the account, yep, I'm putting yep. in whatever, I don't even know how much would yeah, make so a that difference or how to decide that. Or yeah, it will um, be in the in the recording that I sent. Um, when there was an example of Disney stock, you would just literally type in VOO and it'll pop up as an index fund. And you could put five dollars into that, or um, yeah, I think five dollars is the cheapest amount that you could put into that and uh go from there. Uh, I think I don't know how to choose stock. I have no idea what I would choose. Yeah, I, you, I have you, no idea what I would choose. You would just type in VOO and that's it. That's the top 500 companies. So for everyone who's like, I don't know which stock to pick or something like that, this automatically gets you 500 stocks all at once and you're getting the uh, the benefit of having 500. So someone just private messaged me, uh, Joanny, and they're saying, so what's the difference between like VOO and like another ticker symbol, like VTI, for example, VTI stands for total index. So instead of 500 companies, it's 3,900 companies. And they're saying, is there a benefit to even holding both of those? Or is one better than the other? The truth is, you will probably have the same exact result over a 10-year period. Um, remember, here's another fun fact, that if you hold stocks for a 20-year period, you have a 0.01% chance of having less than you started with. The key is you keep investing on a consistent schedule no matter what. 
That's the most important thing that you can do uh, when everyone's saying, hey, this is scary. The economy's changing forever. You ignore it and you keep on going. This has been true for the last 100 plus years, and I believe it'll continue to be true. And if it's not, we got bigger problems. So the real benefit of VOO and VTI and having both is actually really, really complicated. And it is a 102 type of a um, question. So in short, the answer is if you want to Google it, tax lost harvesting. So when the market crashes, and it will, you will see your money cut by a third eventually. Maybe it'll be after it doubles, so you're still in the profit. Maybe it'll be right when you start. Crashes happen about every 10 years. Uh, so it's a normal part of the cycle. However, there's a way to take advantage of a crash if you're investing in your brokerage account, like your regular Webull account. Um, if, say, you put $10,000 into VOO, and you're just like, Okay, 10K, and then next year I'll put another 10K or something like that. Well, say the market crashes and it goes down to $7,000. You can sell it. And now that you've sold it, you secured a $3,000 loss, which you can use to lower your taxes, which you can use to offset capital gains on future profits from a stock. Maybe you buy Tesla and it doubles in price and you sell it. You won't have to pay $3,000 of taxes on that stock. And then instead of just leaving your $7,000 in cash, you would then buy VTI or, or another ETF, exchange traded fund, which is a conglomerate of stocks. Um, so that's where you do have to do your own research and what makes sense. And you have to be confident about it. My preference is just working with VOO and VTI. Again, it's going to have different names across different platforms. Uh, but if you're using Webull, VOO and VTI is good enough for you guys to use. Uh, there is another question that I am seeing in uh, my uh, my chat box. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and answer it real quick. Um, when, oh, someone's just complimenting my mom. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Um, and uh, Francis did point out Robert Kiyosaki is the, per is the person I was referring to earlier. Um, Christina's asking why Weeble versus Fidelity. Um, it really does not matter at the end of the day. Uh, Weeble because it reinforces you right away, right? You create an account, you get free stocks. With Fidelity, it'll take some time for you to get that $100 bonus. That's it. That's really it. But there are pros to Weeble that we that Fidelity doesn't have. And there's pros to Fidelity that Weeble doesn't have. At the end of the day, is the difference between basically picking two avocados and both are kind of equally squishy, but you, you just you don't know which one might be a little bit better. It makes no difference at the end of the day, but I like having multiple bro brokerage firms just in case one goes under um, in a very crucial moment. That's very unlikely, but outages happen all the time, right? Companies, if you guys are in ABA and you work on Central Reach, we get outages like every single week. Uh, so you want to have another one ready just in case that's your buying day or something like that. Uh, the, advantage, the disadvantages of Fidelity is you must invest when the market is open. So that's between uh, 6 a.m. and 1 p.m., on the West Coast. You can't do it later on in the day. On Webull, you actually have after hours trading, which is just welcome to the 21st century. So that's kind of uh, what I'm talking about. Francis had another question about, uh, so buy-in while it's low right now. Um, so it's it's pretty difficult uh, with without a steady income. And yeah, it is true. It is very difficult. This is uh, a steady income is kind of important here you don't want to sacrifice your cash reserves for like your safety for an investment that might go down now in the long run your investment will go up when it comes to bti and voo and if it doesn't that means the system radically changed and the united states is probably just the states so something dramatic has to happen for that to change um but is now a good time to buy it's a much better time than buying a year ago but it's not as good as buying in 2020 when prices touched 2015 prices for about a day or two. There were two days where in 2020, you could buy in for 2015 prices. That was amazing. Stocks like Disney actually dropped to 2013 prices. So that's the power of going in when everyone is scared. However, waiting for that crash 
will probably cost you way more opportunities than simply investing right now. Because at the end of the day, today's all-time highs are tomorrow's lows. Um, shout out to Lowe's. That's a great company. I also happen to have shares, not financial advice. Just wanted to disclaim that. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, there's another question here coming from Joanne. What platform do you use for NFTs? So NFTs is definitely a different TED talk, but I use NFT Coinbase. I think there's a lot of opportunity there and I need to stop talking about it because uh, I didn't get a drop because I talked about it too much, I think. And then there's a uh, VV. Now VV is a really cool platform. That's what my NFT workshop focuses on instead of buying NFTs for like $200, $300 and flipping them for 900 and maybe it not working out. On Vivi, you could do so for ten dollars, uh, for twenty dollars, and fifty dollars. Uh, we have a really cool Disney princess drop that is happening on Sunday. So if you're a Disney fan, you might want to make a Vivi account quickly. Uh, I think they're forty dollars each, and if you hit Ariel. Oh my gosh, Ariel, I'm predicting will go for at least $160, but the odds of hitting Ariel is uh, pretty low. You'll probably get Snow White, but who who would be disappointed with getting the first ever Disney princess? But again, that's different from stocks, but it is a lot more fun for me to talk about. I love uh, all those characters. Um, let's see right here. Um, scrolling through some questions real quick. Um, Declan is asking, hey, I'm from Ireland. Curious to know, is it better to collect dividends or to reinvest it back into the fund? So it is always better. Like some companies, right? They pay out a profit, a share of their profit. Um, that's known as a dividend. So say Coca-Cola makes $100 million in a year. They're going to give shareholders half of that money. So that $50 million is divided by uh, all the people that hold their stocks. And that's not the stock price. That's something, a bonus on top of that. So you will be receiving um, extra money, whether the stock is going up or down. And especially for folks who are like in more of a, I don't have streams of income, my nine to five, I'm kind of done with that. Um, it's later on in life. Uh, and again, like Wim Hof, uh, 60 is just the beginning of uh, probably the greatest decade. But anyways, um, Brain fart, brain fart, brain fart. Hold on, hold on. Dividends. So by reinvesting those dividends, you're buying shares of those stocks automatically, which is really, really cool. Uh, Weeble's problem is it does not have automatic dividend reinvestment, but that is okay because if you have automatic investments on, it should naturally just, if you have any money on the account, once it reaches a certain threshold, I believe like $10 maybe, um, it will... Uh, it will go ahead and purchase the stocks that you're purchasing. So it's pretty much the same thing as automatic reinvestment, except this is something that other platforms don't have. You can choose where you invest that money. That's revolutionary because most of the time if Coca-Cola pays you and you have automatic dividends or reinvestment on, it'll reinvest back into Coca-Cola. But what if you want to take those dividends and reinvest it into McDonald's? Or if you want to reinvest it into Tesla or even... I think it'll work with crypto on Weeble. I, I need to fact check that, but they do have 24 seven customer support. So that should uh, help you guys out. Um, Jarrett is asking, um, I have changed jobs and um, I know I'm not going in these questions in order. I, I'll, I'll go back and answer them all. I have changed jobs and have a $100,000 in a 401k for my previous employer. What would you do instead of, uh, what would you put, what would you do? Put it in a Roth IRA or transfer it to my current employer's 401k plan? I would not transfer it to your current employer's 401k plan. It's not terrible if you do, it's not terrible if you do, but it is limiting if you do. There's so much advantages to transferring it into um into a uh, IRA, you can't transfer it into a Roth IRA directly uh, because when you contributed to a 401k, you didn't pay taxes. So if you transfer it to a Roth IRA, you're going to pay the taxes that you owe, right? Because you never pay taxes on that money. Um, but if you transfer it to an IRA, you don't pay those taxes. You pay them later on in life. And here's, here's another cool thing that's kind of stock market 102. You can withdraw that money in five years. Okay, just what you contributed. This is one reason why people go and invest beyond the match at their jobs for the 401k, right? So the limit is like $20,000 or something. And say your employer matches up to 5% um, 
people go over that to the 20K and then they leave their employer later on and they transfer that 401k money. I'm whispering because it's an, it's not a secret though. Um, I just keep thinking about that bug that kissed my lip last night. I need to find that guy. Um, but uh, yeah, tra transferring it that way will let you access that money sooner. So that's a really cool uh, hack. My mom did that and that's uh, where she can buy like whatever she wants. If you transfer it to a current employer's 401k plan, you're limited by what they offer. So you can't buy like if you think there's a great opportunity with uh, Tesla, a hypothetical example, you can't buy it in your 401k, but you can buy it in your IRA. Um, so, uh, let's see right here, the Wednesday, what's the Wednesday group that you run as being asked by, uh, Francis. So this is, uh, my stock market one-on-one course. Uh, you can message me for more information about that. Um, but yeah, that, that is, uh, my course that is where that's not free. That's paid. Uh, so that's, that's a whole thing. Um, let me see what, what are the questions we got over here? And if you guys have any more questions, uh, feel free to type them in right now. I, I probably uh, messed up by having you type them in earlier because uh, now I have to scroll back and find them. And some people are from, uh, just tell me where they're from. Um, okay, Caitlin says, I have money in investment account and I just never invested it because I don't know how to use the account. I'm a BCBA too. What's up, Caitlin? It's good to hear uh, the second part of that, not the first part of that. Um, all you need to do is... Uh, in my opinion, what I would do if I had money in an investment account and I and I just needed to start was I would buy VOO or VTI and then put on automatic reinvestments and and reinvest my dividend and forget about it for the rest of forever until um, it calls upon me. Now, if you want like strategies, right, and create goals, um, that's a whole different conversation, right? Like it depends what you want this money for. Cause most people want money for the sake of money. And that's like collecting tokens for the sake of tokens. No, you need a goal. Like, what are you trading it for? For me, I'm trading my tokens for a work optional life. So I wanted to pay for my rent. I wanted to pay for my food and one trip per year. At least that's my essentials for kind of a human life at least my quality of life. That, that's what I want for my investments. Um, and that's why, why my goal is to get to $1.25 million. So that's my goal to get to $1.25 million. And uh, I'm investing as much as I possibly can to get there. Um, Francis is asking another question, how to receive investments. Parents had stocks through my life, uh, kind of too hard uh, to get it from them. Uh, I'm I'm not too sure about how you could get it from them. Usually they would leave it like in a will a will and trust um, and you would go through that process to well, receive. I mean, how to get it from not my parents, from the company. My parents, uh, are, they, they, the companies are like tying it up and all. So much paperwork and not nonsense. I have not been able to get the this, this stocks to, which aren't worth that much, but it's still, it yeah, all so seems they're... locked up that I can't get it for years now. Yeah. Um, That's what I'm worried about. Here's do you know what this. company it is? It was Lehman that goes to Franklin Templeton now or something. Okay. That's one. And it's confusing me a lot. Yeah. I, I wouldn't happen to know like the specifics of that company. I, I really don't know. I never really heard of them. Um, uh, but I'm sure there's there's a lot of those uh little investing firms around here and it would just be a grind through the phone. Luckily with like Weeble and Fidelity, it's a really quick process uh to kind of uh get started. Uh but there I I really don't know. I wish I, I did. Um uh, but on the back end I'm asking when you all this investing, um when do you when do you get it, receive it? Take the money. Like, what is what is all that thinking? You can about? sell it whenever you wish to. Um, it's you could literally sell it ten seconds after you buy it, and then transfer it back to your bank account. I wouldn't do that. My whole thing is to just keep it invested as long as possible and uh, live off of it. So maybe the dividends will pay for my lifestyle, or maybe I will sell a portion of the stocks and withdraw that back into my bank. And you could do that whenever you want to. It does take about like three days or something. But with the future of NFTs and uh, blockchain technology, it'll be instantaneous. Uh, the gym people that I work with uh, at uh, my, my place of work from Merrill Edge, they're saying they're working on blockchain technologies um, to 
uh, increase the speed of transferring your stocks and back into cash and back into your bank. So that's the whole point there. But I don't plan on playing games like I'm going to buy this and then sell it for more. No, I'm just going to buy it and hold it for decades to come and uh, sell what I need uh, to cover my expenses and let the market do its thing from there. Now, everyone here, I will be sending a follow-up email, just making sure you make that Webull account, sending you my PDF file, uh, which you can also access on my Instagram, Financialism. And you could uh, um, basically, yeah, just access it there, go through the links. And if you have a buddy that is like about a hundred, uh, that's about a thousand dollars plus. Um, and if you don't have your first $1,000 yet, that's okay. Uh, because um, it is better to use those links than to actually throw money into the market because it is better returns. If you have $50 and you put it into, uh, say, a VOO, it's going to take you about nine years to double it to 100. That's just the way it is. Um, it, it might take seven years. It might take five. It might take uh, two, but it'll probably be around uh, seven to nine years. Uh, so if you put it into Fidelity, you triple it automatically. So that's great. Um, people are saying goodbye. Yeah, I think I'll answer one more question here. And uh probably go to sleep because thank that you so much i just want yeah. to say thank you and i'd love to hear more about that philosophy that, that you're saying right now here's what i decided i would shoot for so that i can live off the principle everything you just said i'm yeah i, I kind of get but not really so that's okay keep coming to like instagram yeah. lives and stuff like that you can i i, I remember you now i know and I, I recognize yeah. In the comments on on instagram I, I am been following you and i thank you so much for um trying to educate me anyway and thank you yeah of course i i love i love your questions um <laughs> jared is asking one last question they're saying so do you recommend then to start with a new 401k plan with an employer or get their match to get their match or invest directly to the individual ira it makes more sense oh well listen jared if they're matching your contributions they're automatically doubling your money or or giving you a percentage for free without the market. So always, 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 just because you have your old 401k, you put it in your IRA, you, you keep it invested, right? It'll probably come in as cash. Everything will be sold and it'll be transferred into your IRA. You don't owe any taxes on that because you got it in fast enough. And then after that, um, I believe Capitalize is a good service that does it all for you for free. Um, I then need to send me a referral link. Uh, hey, if you could wait a week, I'm going to try to get that referral link. But Capitalize is a platform which uh, transfers your 401ks for you, and the platforms pay them for that service. So um, you would transfer your 401k plan into your IRA. Done. Now you would start a new 401k with your new employer. And yes, you would continue investing, hopefully across in both, in your IRA, your brokerage, and your 401k. Again, it depends on your goals, what accounts you prioritize. It depends on what you think the future will look like. Because sure, you can diversify based on, on uh, stocks. Like I'm going to buy technology. I'm going to buy consumer goods. I'm going to buy um, um, entertainment stocks. Um, but also think about taxes, right? Uh, the accounts you invest in, uh, it also could be a defensive play. So investing in a Roth IRA, you're kind of betting on um, laws changing about uh, taxes in the future. And the Roth IRA protects you the most from future law changes when it comes to taxes, because anything invested in there is tax free up uh, after age 59 and a half. Now, if you're over age 59 and a half, you have to have the money invested there for at least five years. And there's no forced withdrawal on like any other account type. Uh, a lot of folks don't think about that. But yes, when you're 72, they do force you to start selling your stocks if it's in an IRA account or a 401k account, but not the Roth IRA, which is why it's such a gem. So guys, I think I have reached my limit now. Uh, I hope you can really I just can I just ask yeah. you to explain that five years what do you mean five you have years, to wait five years. what you have to wait five years to withdraw money from a Roth IRA all only the profits only the profits okay. so if you say you put six thousand dollars into a Roth IRA you could withdraw six thousand dollars the next day if it's still there because if you invest it prices go up prices go down one mistake people do is they just put the cash in the account and they think it's invested it's not you have to do it yourself go into the Roth IRA invest so you can make an account with Weeble takes three minutes um and then um if you are like uh, say 
57, right? You only have to wait two years to access that money, but there's a catch. They're not going to let every 57 and 58 year old take advantage of the system like that. So you have to wait at least five years to access any profits. You're not allowed to withdraw them except for emergencies, except for a first home, except for a child being born or medical situation. Uh, there are exceptions and you can withdraw your money without penalty if that does happen. So that's a really cool thing. Okay. Thank you so much. I don't know why you're not doing this for a living, or you kind of are. I mean, this is, no, no, it's, this is just a, a big, big passion. Most of my income comes from my nine to five working with kids on the spectrum. This just changed my life and I could see the value of it. So I'm like, okay, I got to do one thing to help humanity. I might as well do this. So it's fabulous. <laughs> you should be a fiduciary. That's what I'm hearing. That's the word I'm hearing. Those I just don't want people. to go to school. I don't want to go to uh, school, again, school. Uh, and do okay. all that. So I'd rather just do it this way, like off the grid. Um, but I do sell courses and all that. If anyone ever wants to buy anything. Do you do, do, you do direct console? No, I, I don't do that. No, no. no. Maybe right. in the future. Yeah. Thank you again. Really appreciate it. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Get those Thank Pokemon you. Happy Meals. There, there's some money right there. Uh, Momo, hey, I remember you from, from IG messages. Uh, I appreciate you, Momo. I hope this uh, helps you out. Feel free to message me anytime. Um, I, I like your energy. I like your power. I, I, all you guys got, I mean, I, I don't know any of you, but I kind of feel you. I kind of feel you. So I, I appreciate you all. Um, and I will see you guys hopefully in the next free workshop or you could buy a um, a. Yep. Yep. Got to, got to, got to go to sleep. Got to go to sleep. Reach my limit. Okay. Peace out everyone. I'll see you uh, later. Thank you. Peace.